Well, we're on the bee rescue again. I got bailed up in the supermarket the other day by this nice lady whose husband's made these cool little bird's nests that the bees have taken over. And of course he was a bit peeved about that, so he's nailed some wood on the front of some of the boxes and she's a bit concerned. So they've got these cool boxes in the tree, so we thought we'd well, do a bit of bee rescuing. Um, so I don't know how that's gonna go though. Anyway, we'll find out together, won't we? Here we are at the downtown Loxton. They've made a nice home in there. It's almost like it's a um, proper trap box or whatever, you, like a swarm catching box by accident. How the hell are we gonna get that out of there without getting bitten to death? Should be fun, at least it's only tech screwed to the tree. I reckon if we get that little bit of fly wire and nail across the front of it to keep the girls in there that are in there and then bring it down and see what the hell happens. There's a few of them around this place though. We're gonna have a bit of a perusal. I don't know. Tell you what, I think I've said that before though, isn't it? It'd be easier to just buy them in a package. <laughs> he's nailed some wood on the front of this hole, so I think he's killed this hive, but they're still flying in and out, so I don't know. Actually, that one's still a bit busy. The one over there was in trouble. Now, there's a crazy thought. Maybe that's why the bees are enjoying it. It's actually a hexagon. See how the parrots have been chewing on the edge of the box there? So that was the, the guy's idea, which is kind of cool. So he's saving the parrots and catching bees instead. I feel like Indiana Jones out here, except I haven't got a cool hat. <laughs> I should get a cool hat. Yeah, that's still a parrot. That's good. Oh, there's a cooking bar. Even the cooking bar is reckon I'm an idiot having a laugh at me. What is that, um, David Attenborough or whoever would say, don't try this at home, children. This is just, <laughs> just another stupid idea. But anyway, the things you do to save bees, that wasn't David Attenborough anyway that said that, was it? Was that, that's those stump people. Bang, it doesn't matter. Moving right along. <laughs> Shit. Try not to upset, ow. Upset anybody. <laughs> I'm thinking I might try and just staple this little bit of mesh to the front of the nest box. I wonder if we could almost just leave them in the bloody thing. It's pretty cool. Back in the day, they used to make log nest boxes and then they'd have the, have the one entrance at the other end so they could take the honey off the top. Maybe we'll come up with a whole new program. Be rescued. Oh, what the hell? That's not real stable. <laughs> can you catch me if I fall? Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Okay, yeah. Oh, there I can get a bolt. He's actually bolted it to the tree. <laughs> oh, that's slightly different plan. <laughs> cool. Well, that'd be right, wouldn't it? It's amazing how many bees are actually out of the nest when you when you block the entrance off. You can see how many, all those field bees have just come back in the last two minutes. It doesn't look like that much traffic, but you know, hell. And all that without traffic signals. <laughs> That's pretty clever, isn't it? Well, I don't know whether to go up there, leave my glove off or put my gloves on. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna undo the bottom bolt and then tie the string around it and undo the top one and hopefully lower it down. But we'll find out. I don't know, you reckon? I don't know. I've never taken a bee infested bird box out of a tree before. <laughs> I'm not really sure. It was a texture, it's just a different size. Now. Watch out, don't drop it on your head. So they're not going to be happy with us in a minute. I don't think they're real happy with me right now, actually. <laughs> yep, here we go. Very cool thinking on your behalf, that worked well. That was much better than my idea of dropping it. <laughs> yeah, it's even got a little hinged lid. <laughs> this should be rather interesting, but we won't. We'll get the other ones down and we'll see what sort of trouble we're in as to whether we 
take him straight away or whether we leave him here. One down, four to go. <laughs> and then we gotta get him out of the jolly. Yo. That was two stings in about two seconds. <laughs> so I think the mesh idea is a good option. If I put my gloves on, it won't matter, will it? Very interactive, this camera, man. Is there ever been a B-Man superhero? We've had Ant-Man and we've had heaps of other crazy crap. But have we had a, have there ever, have there ever been a B-Man? B-Man's power. I guess you'd have a, you'd have a wicked ass sting, wouldn't you? For a start, Spider-Man does that with his webs. If you were the B-Man, you'd have to go. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> a few different options. I suggest you don't become a bee hunter if you're allergic to getting stung. <laughs> right. This, this really isn't the most convenient thing to wear, to get up, climbing up a tree. So that gave him something else to think about. If that smoker falls down, we'll try not to set fire to the yard because I probably wouldn't be happy about that idea. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> He's made the perfect swarm trap. Tell you what, we might have to take this idea on board. <laughs> Well, I reckon we'll um, just go back and have a look at the first one and see how many field bees are sitting up on the tree. And if that's all good, we might just take them straight home and figure out what sort of trouble we can get into then. I reckon we'll just pick them up, pop them in the ute, and then we'll go home and see what sort of trouble they're in. Like I say, I reckon this one's fine because I can see they're picking up the pollen. Thinking, oh, I reckon those other three are being sprayed, I reckon. And when he's nailed them shut, I reckon he's filled them full of peebo or something as well. Oh, ladies. Off we go. There's some perfectly designed swarm catching boxes that weren't meant to be catching swarms. I reckon um, this should be rather interesting to see if we can actually get a live hive out of one of these and keep it going. I'm a little concerned that he might have put some insecticide in some of them beforehand, but anyway. And I would suggest that that's why when they say making a swarm catching box that you actually want to catch bees in, you make it like a little nuke box so is that you don't have to go to all the trouble of getting them out of an awkward looking thing like this. But anyway, it was good to rescue these girls because um, you know, they want to breed they want to breed their nice little parrots and we want to get some honeybees, so you know, all's fair in love and war. Cool, here we are, back in the backyard under the walnut tree where it's a bit cooler out of the sun. So these are these five boxes that we pulled out of the trees. It's a little bit exciting. But I didn't break any bones, so I'm pretty impressed with that. Or drop the thing on the cameraman, otherwise that could have been fun. So anyway, you can see the little girls, we've got the netting just to keep them in here for a minute. So we're just gonna get ourselves set up to transfer them into some other boxes. And then I guess we'll pull these slats off and chip the bees into the box that we want them in. I suppose, I don't know. I figure we'll start with this one at the end here because she looks a bit weak and that might be a good one to start with. So we just thought we'd take some footage because normally, you know, I don't know if you know, but the bees will actually stand in the opening of the hive and they'll blow the air out or suck the air in to try and get some ventilation going inside the hive. And normally when they're in a commercial box, you can't really see it so good. 
But in these little boxes that we've brought home out of those trees today, because we were a bit distracted and getting ourselves organised, um, you can get some really good footage of them actually in the doorway of their hive, having blowing the air in and out, which I thought was pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool. Righty, are you lot? Let's see what you're going to do. Oh, they don't feel like they've got too much honey in there, so I don't know what's going to happen. Shit, what do you reckon? We we'll just sit it up here on this table. Oh, wee ladies, what have we done? I wonder how that all holds together. You reckon he's, he's just, he's a, he must be a builder. Look how cool he's put that together. Bloody hell, there's no way you're going to be able to pull them out of there. It would kill them all. See if I can leave it that way. Bloody nail guns, they should never have been invented. Because if you had to push all those, hammer all those nails in there, you wouldn't do that, would you? Look at it. Oh my god. There we go. There we go. Hello! <laughs> what a spin out. Oh! <laughs> See, they got the brood towards the bottom and the honey towards the top. I mean, that's pretty standard of what we're trying to achieve with our bee boxes. So that's what they're doing naturally. I can put all the honey to one end so they sort of think it hasn't been too crazy. I reckon. I'm going to take these off, this is ridiculous. See if I can get myself stung. Like that, straight away, try to bite me. They must be able to smell the flesh, I reckon. There we go, friggers. Now, a few episodes ago, we went fishing, trying to put the stuff on the frames, and some cool people rode in and said that maybe we should try some rubber bands. So I went down the news agency and got some 64s. They seem to be the right size, and, um, they just go over the frame beautifully and hold it all together and that's even cooler than fishing wire so cheers to whoever who sent that in according to the, the guy who wrote in or the girl that wrote in the bees will actually eat the rubber bands when they've got them established and they don't need them to hold the things together anymore they'll eat through the rubber bands and drag them out of the box so even cooler but i don't know i haven't got that far yet so but it sounds groovy it's heaps easier anyway These crazy little boxes are almost the perfect frame size. You know, if he'd actually meant to be catching bees, this is kind of cool. <laughs> Maybe I could get him to make me some bee catching boxes, but I think I'd ask him to put a few less nails because it's a little bit enthusiastic. Where are you, Her Majesty? Are you in here anywhere? They all seem very chilled out, lad. Uh, I wonder whether we should tip that. I reckon we'll tip these bees in there and get rid of a few of them. What do you reckon? Hopefully the frames don't all fall out, that'll suck. At least they're trying to. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what a circus. Whose stupid idea was this? Like I said earlier, I think they sprayed them. Which wasn't real friendly. But of course, if we don't find her, we might kill her, so that would be great, won't it? And then this whole exercise, you're a complete waste of time. Now yeah, they're getting excited. Surprising how much heavier the honey is. Now I reckon I'm going to have a go, I'm going to go over, I've got some solid plastic frames and I'm going to put either side of them for a start. Just so as they feel like they've got a bit, you know, they haven't got to fill up the whole box. 
These things are cool, but they're a pain in the ass when they don't work. <laughs> right. Okay. So I reckon we'll put it back where we got the pox from. Where we got that thing from, we'll put it back, put this box back there so the field bees can come back to it. And then we'll clean up our mess and do the next one. It's got their smell on it, so there's not too many in there though, is there? So I reckon I know why these guys are a little less, little less fucking happy. We've got some queen cells. Check that out. So either they lost their queen and making a new one, or they were going to swarm. So I don't know which. We'll see how many eggs are in here, and then I'll make a decision as to what they were doing. Just thinking that this nest box might have had a bit of foul brood because foul brood stinks like rotten eggs. But just wonder what we just found. Some rotten eggs. <laughs> Ooh, they stink. So his bird box did work as a bird box. They obviously were having halfway through hatching some babies and then they got invaded. Look at that, eh? Nature at work. Oh, well, that was a fun way to spend an afternoon. De Deboxing some bird boxes and putting them in some bee boxes. We put them back where they came from, each one, and I've stuck the old bird box in front so maybe they'll think about that and then tomorrow I'll take them away and then hopefully the girls will start flying in and out of these new boxes and then we'll have to get them out of mother's backyard or we'll be a cactus. So I just sort of thought I'd just show you guys the bees on the pine trees. Now they're not here getting nectar, they're not here getting pollen. What they are getting is the sap. They're pulling the sap out of the pine trees because obviously pine trees have some really cool resin and what they're doing is they're turning that into the pop pupulus, populus. There you go, I'll get the pronunciation wrong. That's like that kid on the head, isn't it? Pronunciation. I've got my pronunciation. Anyway, <laughs> you probably don't get that over there. Anyway, so they're in here and they're getting that. And that's what they use to mend up the holes and to stick the lids on their boxes. They stick lids down and they stick the, the frames together if they're, if they're not using wax. And it's the stuff that us beekeepers find really complicated to get the bloody boxes apart if they're bad too long. But they're bloody clever little critters. I think back in the day they used to think that was how they made the wax but apparently they did an experiment of course and locked them in a box inside a sealed room and just filled them on some sugar water and they made wax naturally without getting outside into the environment but what they're using this for is to mend the holes in their boxes so I reckon never mind the fact they make honey they make wax and they also make this cool stuff that they can mend shit with I just thought it was pretty cool. So if you stand back, you see the bees all going to a pine tree. It's pretty fascinating. Like they'll, they're pretty busy here, actually. I don't know what they're mending, but they're not happy. They've obviously got something to mend. Well, it's not actually Springer anymore, but I thought we'd have a bit of a recap on um, swarm catching boxes, because obviously everybody would know you can catch a swarm, but if you can catch them in a box, well then half the job's already done, because they're already in it. I've had a crack at buying the Swarm Commander stuff, I've had a crack at the um, lemongrass, and uh, I don't know, several other ideas, and uh, essential oils, essential lemongrass oil I think it was, 
And some of that sort of worked. I found in the end it was better just to have some, like a used newt box. Seemed to work good. So they actually had some of the honey scent, some of the old bee scent in there and a bit of drawn comb and some other frames. And they seem to be the most successful. And this last spring, I think I got 11 swarms from just doing that, which I thought was pretty effective. And so I just thought I'd show you this and then we'll go and have a look at the one that I've left in the, in the tree. So this seemed to be the most successful method for me. I've got a bit of drawn comb. As long as it's nice and clean, don't have um, old, well, it's probably not the best to have old brood comb so you get the wax moths and crap in there, but um, generally they'll die out before the swarm turns up anyway. So you just want the nice, so then the bees can smell all of this and it's just nice and natural. And look, one of the girls from around here is already smelling this up. And I just sit that in the middle. They'll come, in, see, they'll come zipping in their little hole, having a sniff around. And the field bees will just come in and work this. And then of course they'll go back and tell the scout bee if there's a swarm coming. Sometimes they'll fly straight from the actual hive in the field straight into here. You don't even have to do the whole swarming excitement. Well, anyway, I've had good success. So I just thought I'd share that. We'll go and have a look at one that's left. So this is um, the last little swarm catching box that I've left in this tree. So we've, she's run on a bit. We're getting on you know, a fair bit after swarming season. But anyway, I thought I'd leave it up here so we could film it. And so this is number 12. So I thought that was pretty good average actually for around this countryside. And I thought we'll pull her out of the tree and have a bit of a look. But I think I might put my bee suit on before I do that. I might just give them a little puff of smoke. Like I said earlier on though, this, these, we've left these here a bit longer than probably they need to. So I'm actually gonna put them in this bigger box so I'm just going to transfer them into that as well while we're here playing around with them. I think I'm going to bring them down and sit them on top of this pallet. They'll eventually figure out where they are. It's a bit cooler today so they shouldn't be too many bees out and about. But we'll give them a bit of a puff and see how angry they can get. Me um, teammate was just wondering about a ladder so trying to explain to him that that was the ladder. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what happens. Hopefully I don't drop the shit on my head. Oh my goodness mate. Oh. If I drop that on your head, you won't be happy, will you? <laughs> Heck, that's quite heavy. They've been busy. Don't try this at home, children. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness me, lady. We've been leaving this a bit long. Ooh, they have been busy. Look at that lot. <laughs> I thought they had a bit of honey on board. Wow. This is what happens when you leave your swarm box a little bit long. They get a little bit carried away. <laughs> the joys of accommodating for the film crew. But hell, that looks all right to me. Look at that. That's not bad. Would that technically be free honey since we didn't do anything to get this swarm except put this box together? not that far away we're just going to sit them back on top of that pallet and then eventually the field bees will figure out that this is where they're meant to come back to we'll see what sort of mess we've got since we've left it a bit long they have definitely filled up this poor little nuke box i think what's happened is the wax foundation that we had in here has melted a bit and made a very weird little pattern mm -hmm. shit happens as they say doesn't it seems to happen on this show anyway <laughs> They're industrious little critters, aren't they? Mm. But anyway, probably wasn't actually expecting to catch this one. She's doing a good job under arduous conditions. <laughs> Seen her yet, but we don't really need to find her as long as we don't kill her. It's making a mess we are. Ooh, got a nice honey store there on the edge. Golly. They're pleased with themselves, I reckon. Mm -hmm. uh, But you will be happy girls once we get you settled. 
because now you have a bit more room. I'll just leave them there for a second until they sink. So as you can see, we've caused a bit of confusion. The field bees have come back to where we, where they think home is, but they're flying around and they won't be long and they'll figure out that home's down here. So, you know, within the rest of this day, so they, all those girls will be down here with these lot. So we're basically mimicking the fact that if this was a natural swarm in a tree and it fell out of the tree, well then they would re-jig re their sensors or their radar or, I don't really know, how do they, how do they actually find out where they are? They're pretty bloody clever. <laughs> Apparently they ride, fly around in circles and tell each other what the hell is going on, so that's pretty cool. Well, I think that was fairly successful. We got the girls moved into a bit bigger box. I'm just going to pop them here because I just think it's a bit easier than clambering back up into the catching position. We'll just let them settle down, put this lid on. They can stay here for a day or two until they get motivated to run them down the way. They didn't look like they had any bad diseases going on, so except for the fact that they had built their nests on a little bit wonky honeycomb, but that's not their fault. So I reckon they're doing pretty good, actually. 